Welcome to Small Practice Support, Information Session number 31. In this Law Society of Ireland recording, Michael Monaghan and Justin Purcell review case management systems. You're very welcome to a small practice information session 31 and I'm here with uh, Michael Monin from the technology committee who's going to bring us through some uh, uh, some feedback on case management systems and, and how you use them and how you go about using them and if you have one if you don't have one and some of the, the key factors to, to consider so so Michael you're very welcome and thanks for joining us today thanks Justin and uh, listen welcome to everybody who's clicked in already I know some people might be joining late it's just one o'clock we're very accurate in these sort of things. But listen, first, thanks for taking the time out of your life to listen to me about something. Uh, we're going to do a survey first. Justin's going to put up a survey because I need to know what sort of numbers or what sort of people I'm talking to. In other words, uh, you know, have people got a management system? Have they not got one? They're interested in getting one. Uh, no, Justin, put up the, um, that's not the one, put up the, the basic one okay. for a start. Uh, okay. Uh, just whether you have one, you don't have one, or whether you have one and you're interested in moving on to something else. I think those are the three sections that I see are out there. And while Justin's doing that, um, can I just give a shout out to the technology committee? Uh, if anybody needs help in any of this area, that's what the committee is there for. We have some super people on the committee, right? Uh, there's obviously uh, Veronica Donnelly is v.donnelly at lawsociety.ie if you want to send any things in, any questions. We have, you know, people like uh, Jim Heaney, who's done great work over the years trying to get the public service to uh, move on with technology. You have Gian Kelly, who's super on GDPR and data protection. And you have Neil Butler down in Thurlis, who's smashing for anything to do with small practices. He has just got it nailed, you know. So, like, all that information is there, available to you as a, as a, as a colleague, you know. And the other thing, too, in case I forget it with all the talking, is... You know, if you're looking at systems, don't be afraid to talk to colleagues. You know, what system have they got? How does it work? Um, no, keep going back, Justin. Yeah. Michael, yeah. we seem to have lost that survey for some reason. I don't know where okay. it's gone. Well, so we'll just... okay, if you can work away and maybe pull yeah. that up, what, yeah. it would be useful because then I know, you know, I, I need some feedback as to whether I don't want to be talking to people who haven't got a case management, uh, if people have got a case management system, you know. Sure. Um, so if you can find it, it would probably help me because otherwise it gets kind of general. Um, okay. I, I would, um, okay. I suppose- Just keep going there, Michael, yeah. Yeah, what I would say is, I'm gonna approach the first few minutes for people who haven't got a case management system. Look, the paper system is gone, right? We've seen this in the past couple of months, right? You know, we've had the perfect storm why, you know, how are people going to do remote working? And now if it's come, it comes in statutory wise, how are you going to do it unless you have a system? The, the days of the paper file are, are going to go. End of story. It's, it's old ideas. And the, the, the way you're going to survive in the future is be having, having everything on screen. And I mean, if you have a system already, I'm sure you're thinking, that's great. I'm glad we have the system. Our people are working remotely. I know the bigger offices and all that would have them. I've never seen a statistic as to how many people actually across the country have a case management system, but I still come across people who don't have anything. And I don't know whether they're stuck, whether it's financial, uh, whether they just don't like technology or I don't know, but I think now this remote working and the COVID, you know, has come at us and we really have to look at it, right? And go back, if you like, on some of these webinars, just to, to, to uh, give you an indication. There was a very good webinar on before Christmas with um, uh, Larry Fenlon. Yeah, there you go. So if you could complete that, uh, it would help me. But I I'll just keep going. Larry Fenlon is in Lehman's and Larry was saying, listen, we couldn't survive as a firm unless we had all this, you know, with case management. They're a bigger firm. That's fine. But what's happening in the bigger firm today will happen in your firm tomorrow or the next day. You know, the, the clients are getting more demanding. They're going to want to see, you know, what's happening on their file. And he mentioned an interesting thing called Portal. Um, now, the way I see this whole business we're in going is that number one, you, everybody will have to have a case management system. It may well be the insurers insist on it. It may well be that, you know, to stop people missing statutes to say, you know, why don't you have a case management system? 
Um, I think the Law Society are coming out with their excellent standard, I think, this year. And I, I, again, I think to operate or to get that standard, you know, of approval, I think you're probably going to need a case management system because it requires a lot of uh, reports and stuff like that. Now, um, so I'm just waiting for that survey to come in. The other thing about, you know, why you should have a case management system is uh, go back on the other webinar given by Paul Hadjik later, earlier on the year, I think it was September, what's happening in the UK. All right, so there we have, we have 85%, right? Uh, well, so I don't want to be telling the 85% get a case management system. So I think the next survey, Justin, will be, uh, you know, why are you on this? What do you need to know from me about case management systems if you have one? Are you unhappy with them? Are you thinking of changing? Uh, is it costing too much? Uh, are you not, are you going to the cloud? Are you not staying on the cloud? Um, so listen, at, while that survey is coming up, I'm going to address the uh, thinking about it section and to say, look, you need, you need one of these systems, right? They're out there. They've been going for 20 plus years. Um, you, um, you're going to need them. End of story. Um, I was talking about the guy in the UK, Paul Hadjik. Go back and have a look in September at, at his webinar and he'll tell you what's happening in the UK. They've moved on, as always, in the UK, further than us. And what he calls transparency, that, that it's coming to the stage where your client wants to be able to log into their file and see what's going on. Now, you may say, I don't want the clients logging in, looking at their file. <laughs> well, you, know, you may not want it today, but there's a whole generation of very tech savvy people coming up behind you. And they're all going to operate off their laptops, off their mobiles and... In fact, if I was setting up today, if anybody is out there who's secretly thinking of either leaving a firm or setting up on their own, uh, I always think people make a big mistake uh, and they, they uh, go off and buy a desk and rent an office. And if I was starting today, I would uh, get a case management system and a mobile phone and a means of transport. And I would start pitching to get business because A, when you have everything on a case management system, you're, you have ability to list all your clients, list, uh, to market to them, to send them an email if something comes up, which is in their area, uh, to send them a newsletter at Christmas, you know, that all can be done by uh, having the case management. And uh, I don't know whether the people who have the case management system, uh, now here we are, what issues? Um, Okay, service, price, backup, other. Hmm, right. Well, other, actually, I don't know what the other would be. Uh, look, I'll deal with some of those as I go down. Service, right. People have systems. Now, um, uh, I suppose to bring it up, there, there's two, um, uh, what do I call them, two sheets going up there from Justin in relation to uh, the changes which have happened since 2019. If you go into the Lost Society website, go down to the technology section, you'll see the original um, questions which were being asked. And I think that's one of, Justin is going to put that up as a sheet as well. So there you have 20 questions. If you're buying one, those are the questions to ask, right? Now, what has happened since 2019 that was done is that some of the Irish companies have been taken over and that may be the problem with the service. I don't know. I know I've heard back and I've had people contact me about um, the cost when some companies were taken over by UK people uh, up went the cost of service and there was a big row some people wanted to leave some people cut their own deals and um, uh, that was a problem right uh, okay price if you're buying a case management system uh, look there are some that are sort of cheap and cheerful and you know I don't think price should be a reason to hold you back you know a bank will give you money for capital expenditure so I think you know I think it's time to, to move up and get that organized, right? Uh, backup. Um, yeah, yeah, put it back up, Justin, can you? Can I see it again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Before you, mind, I need to read them off. Okay, backup, right. If this is the problem since companies have been taken over um, and you find you have UK, um, you've got to contact the UK to get service, I can see where that's coming from, right? Uh, storage, I, I don't know what, that's about if, if if you bought a case management system tomorrow, you start with the exist with you start with new files. You don't sort of put up your older stuff, right? Um, is storage is that, does that mean there's a problem with cloud or whether you have a server? Um, I'll deal with the cloud and the server in a few minutes. And I don't know what's the other complaints. Maybe maybe it's that you just don't like technology and you you know 
or nobody in the office will actually take it on as a as a project or whatever it is, you know. But well, maybe people on the chat could tell us what other issues are happening. Yeah, it might, might be no harm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but uh, yeah, I, like there are problems there, right? Um, okay. The so we we've the, shared there, Michael, just the, the the two articles. A little bit messy there. A little bit clumsy. I right, okay. Uh, added it in there, but. Uh, Welcome they're available to the on the technology website and then the Paul Hajek. Uh... Hmm. Yeah, that's great. Um, and and they're there. You just go back up on, on the previous webinars and you'll see them. And um, I think, again, go back to Larry Fennan. I was very impressed with Larry Fennan. And he, you know, he was saying what they have to do. And 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 I know they're a bigger firm. And if, if you're a sole practitioner, you say, well, I don't have the time to do that, you know. But you really have to... Um, uh, I'm just reading there, data input precedence and tagging is not user friendly. Well, it depends on your system. Um, and again, you've got to talk to colleagues about this, right? Um, I, like, I don't know. I mean, it depends. Are you working on your own? Are you working with a team? Is somebody in the office actually interested in this sort of stuff, you know? Uh, server, happy with the system, but want to cloud-based. Ah, I know this. I know their problem. Uh, one of the still Irish, no, one of the companies was taken over, I think, and I won't be mentioning company names here because I don't want people chasing me to say I, I said something wrong or something like that. But um, uh, that question, what's most used by solicitors? Um, I don't know. Um, there's no general statistic on that unless, you know, at some stage in the future when the lost site here to send out practice and search, have you a case management system? Uh, will you tell us which one it is? That's the only way we could gather what the, the numbers are. None of the actual companies would obviously know what where the suppliers are, right? Okay, so there you are. So there's there's a big uh, statistic there now. If, if that one gets filled in, uh, one office agreed to invest in technology. Can I go back to the server and the um, cloud-based, right? It's not vitally a good, if you have good broadband, right? Uh, and you have to work remotely, um, then, you know, if you have a server, a server will keep going. Um, you know, don't forget, if you're buying a case management and then you're putting it on the cloud, you're paying the, the, the license fee for the case management, and then you're going to have to pay for the cloud as well, right? So, it's, you know, if, you're, if cost is a big factor, just bear that in mind. Now, if you want to work, you must, if you want to do the cloud, fine. It's obviously very uh, trendy at present to say, oh, well, our office is on the cloud, et cetera, and we're able to do this, that, and the other. But like, I work on a server, right? But I can just log in. I mean, it's, it's, it works, you know, it's grand. I don't, I don't need a cloud uh, at present. You know, maybe when my server gives up in a couple of years' time, everybody will be put on the cloud. And I wouldn't get, I wouldn't break up about the um, storage. I know we're lawyers and um, uh, we tend to, uh, worry about where it's stored and confidentiality and all that sort of stuff. Well, I understand now that Amazon Web Services are operating out of a data center up in a field in Mead someplace. And I, I would imagine that's that should sort that problem with, you don't have to worry about Brexit or, you know, um, what do you call it, going to America or all that sort of stuff. Now, a factor actually, one of those 20 questions you will find is if you're if you're interested in buying, you ask where it's been stored, right? And I don't know whether the UK uh, companies who have now taken over the Irish companies, whether they're storing in the UK or they're storing in Ireland. I'm not, that's something to check out. And the other thing, just when I think of it is contract, uh, where if you're signing up to a contract with some supplier and there's a problem, uh, wh which area law has actually deal with it? Because I think there are some companies who are saying, well, we're, you will sign up with UK law. so. You're on your own on that one to see what the story is, you know. Um, okay. Can you share the results there, uh, Michael, if people oh, want to see right. what's been used. And I know we don't have all of them in there, no, but they were, they, they were as per the article that we did in the Gazette, which I have a link to there, and which we'll send out to people. But okay. Some people are talking about partner and bundle docs and a few other systems, so. Sorry, hold on. I'm just... Uh, things are coming up there. I I'm set to recommend to log into a server remotely. What, I'm just reading from, from Mark there. It's gone again. Yeah. Uh, what program do you recommend to log in remotely? Uh, sorry, the, the logging in remotely is a broadband issue. It's not a case management issue. The case management is in your anywhere. It's, it's on a server or it's on the cloud. So they'll all allow you to log on, right? Um, so I... I, I I don't see what's the problem there, you know. The, you know, they're obviously all moving towards being cloud 
friendly, if you want to put it that way, right? Um, now, I wonder, just looking at this question I got from somebody during the week there about bundle docs. I don't know about bundle docs, I, you know, but I did say uh, um, Greg Ryan is on the technology committee, and I know Greg has uh, Clio, um, and he says it's wonderful, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know if anybody wants to send any questions to him, or if you want to, if you don't know Greg, just send it in to the committee, and we'll direct it to to. Uh, to, to uh, Greg to see what he has to say. So I, that's, I don't know what the story is. Um, sorry, log okay. me in, I think that popped up there, log me in and- um, Splash off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, sorry, I'm just- so reading... they, they operate as a bridge into, if you have a, a server-based system yeah. that you log in to the server and pick up what you've got there. So you don't need a cloud-based system necessarily to access no. remotely. So, no, no, so. It, it, can, it can be done, right. Um, but um, what it sounds, well, I don't know. I, I'm presuming that people who have the 80% who have a case management system already, I presume that they are um, already working remotely and they've worked out this. So that's, and we're all allowed work. We're essential workers, so we're allowed work. And I presume people are working quietly away behind the scene. What about third, I had to integrate in any case. Um, uh, John, that query, I don't know. I, I think Transact is basically for auctioneers. I haven't seen, um, and again, if, if uh, there are some people on the committee who are good on conveyance inside of technology, um, and um, that might be something that, uh, the answer is, I don't know. I haven't seen it come up anywhere, right? Um, I think if we could get most people, because if you look at the system we're operating, the court service is going to go digital. The revenue are way ahead of the posse, as we know. Everything is going to be digital. Um, the uh, Who else are we dealing with? The probate office, right? They'll probably uh, bring them around to things to be lodged. Oh, and how are you going to store all this information? Uh, the banks, right, classic case. Look at the amount of EFTs we've got to do. Now, some people will say, well, I have a separate, uh, I, I work Word, or I work um, a separate accounts package, or I uh, time recording. How are you going to do time recording without a case management system? Um, because uh, the new people to replace the taxation master, whatever they call them, um, they are going to look at your time record on a case. And we know what's coming down the road with PIs next year, big campaign to push down the cost. So you're going to have to be able to have a record of all the stuff that you've done on your file in order to get your fees. So again, how are you going to store this? You know, um, So I know I'm talking to the converted of the 80% who have one, and that's great. Um, the people now who haven't got one and are thinking about one, right? Um, and Or who are unhappy with the one they have, although who's got the uh, who wants to change over now at this stage, you know, in, in, in the climate we're in. But I had what I call a, a cheat sheet, right? And again, uh, from my, what, what I did actually was I sent out a questionnaire to all the companies. Some of them gave me more information than others. Some of the questions were a little bit cheeky. They said, you know, why is your system any better than anybody else, you know? And, you know, some people answered it and some people didn't, you know? Um, but reading between the lines on stuff, uh, you know, um, some people actually insisted on talking to the um, committee and, you know, we got them online and because we had, we had complaints in about certain systems, right? And we thought, here, we have a couple of complaints. Let's get this person online, right? And the one, and I don't know, uh, let me just have a look down here. Michael, um, would it benefit me to share my screen with the list of questions on it? I know I can see your, oh, sorry, I'm looking at the, um, the which... The uh, questions that you're talking about with regards to which case management system. Oh, what that's what, well, if, if they can look at it, I, I probably won't have time to go through those now. No, I prefer to just look at the actual, um, the, um, the which case management is actually being used, right? Um, and I think some of these have been taken over during the year, right? And, and that may be a, a, an issue for some people, right? Um, but I know uh, there's one of them mentioned there, and I know <clears throat> that they're only interested in bigger firms, and they don't seem to want to move to the cloud, right? And that might ring a bell with somebody in one of those there. There's another uh, good Irish company uh, who were taken over. You see, if they're good, people seem to come in and buy them out, which is very nice. Uh, but when they're taken over, uh, I've heard problems about backup and where information was being stored. 
And this is the one with the accounts package where uh, they think they can bolt on a bog standard accounts package suitable for solicitors. And then I think leave the client account out separately. It's, it's just a complaint I got from somebody. There's another company which make a big claim about, uh, and they're there and I see, right. Uh, and they say, look, we're on the cloud. Um, we are, everything's going to be in the cloud, tra, tra. but I've heard when you go to deal with them, they're selling you something in packages, right? And uh, our modules, you know, so you have to keep buying modules was what I was told, right? Um, there is another one then, uh, cloud-based again, uh, storage in Ireland, and what I call the cheap and cheerful, right? And they are very happy. They, they don't market an awful lot and they've been, uh, pushing away at the market and they're happy enough and um, it just does what it does you know um, there's another another company taken over and here we have the problem with service calls for the UK apparently they're operating a ticket system uh, so if you ring up they say oh, well we'll give you a ticket and somebody will call you back at some stage that might or mightn't be a good idea I don't know um, the as I've already mentioned the cloud-based systems that it's an extra expense bear that in mind if you're thinking of moving off from your from your um, uh, server. Um, what else have we got? Uh, any question there, Justin, that uh, will I have yeah, time? Well, I, I put up those questions that just what people that. should be asking. And the question coming back to me is, are the answers available on the, on the Law Society website to those 20 uh, questions? Uh, no, I think it's a simple answer. Um, yeah. and no, they are the que no, they are the questions which you should ask if you're going to buy or change or you have a problem, right? Um, I, I think if you have a general problem and we get a pattern of the same problem coming from colleagues, um, I think it should be addressed to the committee and the committee, you know, I, I seem to be the case management guy by default for, for on the technology committee. So if it comes into the committee, if anybody, you know, and we see this pattern, then we will go to the company and say, listen, you know, Irish colleagues are not happy about this, this and this, you know, um, so you know, I think that's probably the best thing to do. I uh, said so that's what we did with oh, this this issue about the accounts. What's the best way of contacting the uh, the committee? Is there a particular person, oh, or can they email you? Or wonderful and long suffering Veronica Donnelly, v dot Donnelly at lawsociety.ie, and she thanked me for that. But I mean, that's that's what we're there for. We're, we're there to help these committees. There to help people, you know, and and sort problems for them. And technology, as far as I can see, has always been a little bit under the radar, but there's people doing good work. Uh, as I say, I mentioned some of them there earlier and they're there, you know, they'll help you if, if, if and there's just so many new people in the, in the um, profession that, that, you know, you know, people say Lost Side is very distant. Yeah, it might be to an extent, but at least they have these committees there, you know, like even, even these webinars, you know, have been a super idea uh justin and keith you know it's 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 you know and it, it's a credit to you the numbers you get on them that um you know so it's probably worth just pointing out to people who aren't familiar with the website so you go to the law society website and there's a kind of a ribbon across the top and then there's drop down boxes for practitioners and you can go in there and find the committees and then there's the business hub and on the business hub then that's where all of these uh small practice support information sessions are housed and there's a huge amount of uh, depth of um, uh, information there around running your practice etc and maximizing efficiency, setting up buy, sell, merge, etc., and bulletins. So it's it's, yeah. it's really important that people know that that stuff is there. It takes a bit of delving around. You can always send me a message if you, if you have any queries. But Justin, yes. people are going to be online because they've got to do the practicing search online. So when you're online, have a look around. To the man who just put in the query about uh, league or um, something, they're now called thread. That's that's. Um, uh, the, 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 that last question that came up there, sorry, it went in and went out. I didn't see who it was or what it was, but I, I, I think it's, it's now, they said it has a new name or there's no name or they couldn't find it. But that's, that's the system they're operating. Um, anything else coming in? Well, well, there's that, back to the, those 20 questions. I mean, should we be uh, publishing our uh, answers to those questions? And I think the answer is really no, because I mean, we can't be seen to be endorsing one over the other because that wouldn't be fair and it would be a subjective kind of comment. So I don't know whether that's that, that's something we're in a position to do. Uh, the answer is we're not. And also, the, the, it, there are simply questions that you must ask if you are making an inquiry about either changing or buying your case management system. So we've provided 
the questions that, that are worth asking for, right? But I see even this morning, uh, somebody sent me in that Clio have been recommended by the Law Society in England, right? Um, so I don't know. I, I don't know much about Clio, to be honest. I, I think they're American, I think, and they've, they're pushing into Europe and, and England now, I think. And um, so I don't know. But, but again, it's, it's, you know, it's purely an opinion as to what's good and what's not good. Or, you know, especially for lawyers, to try and tell lawyers that one is number one and that one is number two. <laughs> we're, not, we're not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're in enough so, trouble. <laughs> So, so like the, there's a, the question there, expedite, X, XPD8 was that's not on the list. It's under a different that's name. I have added. Yeah. That's now called thread. Thread. Okay. And then I suppose, Michael, in summary, just as we're coming to the end now, I mean, uh, what, what, what are your suggestions in, in just doing some due diligence on the purchase of a system? Like, are there, there, like are there, there must be some steps that you must take. So those 20 questions are really beneficial. Talking to other people or talking to the company itself and asking them for testimonials, et cetera, talking to them. Like there is a bit of work to be done in this. It's not Listen, here, by yeah, the system you'll be sorted. Like it's an investment in your firm. I mean, at the point you've got to sit down after this and ask, am I going to move on or am I not? Am I going to be paper based? Surely the past six months has taught you that you know paper is is no good in a remote situation unless you're hauling bundles of files out of your office to to uh, you know and you're, maybe you're going in, you're allowed to go in and all that sort of stuff, but. You know, are, wh where's your team? Are they being hauled in, or do they want to stay at home? Like, like, you know, it, it, this remote work, I think it's more efficient. People say, oh, they won't work if you know I don't keep an eye on them. You know, but I, I don't know. I, I think it's going to be the way. People are going to want to work remotely. Uh, you know, especially if you're Dublin-based and your people are coming in from suburbs and travel and all that sort of stuff. You know, you can see the way it's going to go. So unless you can visualize. Uh, you, you know, the change is coming. Paper is going to go, uh, it's not going to go completely, right? Nobody's going to go paper. Although it'll be interesting to see what Gerald Grork says. I know people are asking about this bundle docs and putting, um, putting up, uh, you know, briefs for council. Uh, when Gerald Grork comes on your webinar, he's coming up in another couple of weeks, isn't he? Who, yeah, who's he's going up there on the 10th of February. He's, he's the paperless council, right? So, you know, these guys are like, showing you the way things are going to go you know the younger council are all very web savvy and you know they'll take stuff online you do a wee transfer it goes up to them and they look at it on their screens and the days of big bundles of paper being forwarded and back i know the older generation might do that but it will change it will change over a period of time and you won't be just able to also to make the point michael it's not necessarily just about convenience either it's like if you want to go on and sell your practice in the future it allows somebody to come in and do like really fast efficient due diligence if you have a case management system it, it makes it makes the process much much more uh, easier and so probably increases the value potentially yes. go back to david rowe david rowe's talk was very interesting on this very point he, he gave a super uh, presentation and I complimented on him, right? That he really said, these are the things that you need to look at if you're selling your practice. Uh, bang, 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 right? They're all there and, you know, a good system. And, you know, if you have no system, you're really working against yourself and trying to extract money out of your practice at the end of the day, you know? So, um, and look- So they're all, all available there on the Law Society support webinars. And, and even going back to what Lawrence was saying in the, in the LexTech, it starts with digitization or have you digitized your files? And, and the first part of that is getting a case management system. So until you start. I sympathize with those people here who are on their own, right? And are small and either they're working on their own or they have one or two people working with them, right? I sympathize with them because, you know, tech is a whole new area. Like, and we know this, we've gone around the country in the past couple of years with the legal RSS, you know, putting content on solicitors' websites and that sort of stuff to generate action for solicitors to get them business. And like solicitors just don't see the connection that unless you have a website, you're not going to get the business, you know, and unless you have an active website, you know, I mean, if people are looking and wondering, where am I going to get new business? It's been bad last year. You know, I wasn't in contact with people, um, you know, the, this is a big move on and the first move you have to make is to have your office organized to have a case management system it's it's and, and I, unfortunately 80 percent. we now know 80 percent of the, today have let's take that as a general statistic 80 percent have um a case management system so they're going to be able to use but you must use the system if you don't use the system uh you must you only get out of it what you put into it right uh, so and you probably know that already you know 
Um, it'd be interesting to know how many people have changed web, um, changed a case management system uh, in the past five years. You know, did people, were they unhappy with the previous one? Were they not getting service? What, you know, that'd be an interesting statistic. So I don't know whether Law Society want to try and find out something for that. Maybe the technology committee could do it. Mm. I think yeah, well, maybe on, on that note, Michael, we're kind of coming to the end now. We're out of out of time, but maybe you'd come back and talk to us again about uh, other technology issues that, that people people are facing. And if anybody has any uh, 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 subjects that they'd like us to to delve more deeply in, uh, feel free to, to to send us an email. My uh, my details are, are I'll put up on the screen now. I'm always available to to take emails from people. So. As I say, any queries that people don't want to raise here publicly, if they want to uh, send it to Veronica. If anybody knows me, if anyone wants to email me, they can get me on the website and um, just send the query and we'll, we'll, we'll see what I can do for you. Yeah. So we're just in yeah. summary there, next week's session is on merging and retiring from practice with Michael uh, O'Scall from Crow and then legal firm marketing tips from the marketing club, Claire Fanner in the UK uh, is on the 3rd of February and then developing a paperless office on the 10th of February. Encourage everyone to go and review maybe some of the Law Society support webinars and, and take a look around the small practice hub. Um, and send us in a, a query if you have one. Um, and Michael, you've been a good sport today. Would you like to add anything in, in conclusion? Uh, travel to Sligo for your holidays this year. It's lovely down here, I'm telling you. Don't be bothered going abroad. Just visit the country in the West. <laughs> I look forward to it. Justin, thanks. Yes, thanks for your time and Sloan. And thanks everybody. And hopefully we'll see you next week. Sloan. <laughs>